everyone, today I'm here with my August wrap up. I read five books and I read most of the sixth book but I haven't quite finished it yet but I will talk about it at the end of the video. Um, I would have liked to read more but like I said already a couple of times I got a new job and with all the excitement and all of a sudden getting really busy with everything for some reason I didn't quite read as much as I wanted to. Hoping to remedy that in September with the Magical Readathon and I'm really in a reading mood right now so that would be lovely but let's go through the books that I've read in the month of August. So the very first one is The Smallest Man by Francis Quinn. This one is a historical fiction set in 1625 I want to say and it kind of follows real historical events that was hap that were happening in, in England at the time. So our main character is Ned, he's a dwarf and he technically served, served to the Queen, so he kind of entertains her and things like that. It doesn't really quite specify what exactly he does because mostly I think it's concentrating on his life like outside of that and also on real historical events. Uh, this book was unusual I would say and it does say something like not your ordinary historical fiction here which I completely agree with. I'm gonna read you the blurb just, because, just to kind of show you the um, atmosphere of the book I guess. I also realise I've been saying his name incorrectly. Sorry about that, I'm terrible with names. So, my name is Nat Davy. Perhaps you've heard of me. There was a time when people up and down the land knew my name, though they only ever knew half the story. In 1625, they gave me as a gift to the new Queen of England and called me the Queen's Dwarf. But I was more than that. I was her friend when she had no one else, and later on, when the people of England turned against their king, it was me who saved her life. When they turned the world upside down, I was there, right at the heart of it, and this is my story. So, like I said, the first quarter of the book was following his childhood. Um, some of it when he was still in his previous family, and then he was sold to the Duke, then was given, giving him away as a gift. And his starting times there, how everything was different. It was so sweet. I really liked his character in the childhood. It was so such a sweet story, how he was making friends with different people. The friendships in here are absolutely sweetest things. And the tone of the book, again, is so comforting and cosy and kind and warm. I really enjoy that part quite a bit. Then it does slightly change when he grows up. Uh, because obviously it's getting a little bit more serious with all the history that's hap was happening at the time with, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it wasn't great for the king and queen, unfortunately. Um, and his life as well, again, the friendships that he was making, the difficulties that he was facing because he was a dwarf, but how brave he was and how amazing he was. It was beautiful to read about. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I definitely recommend it. And also I listened to this audiobook whilst reading physical copy, which I find recently I really enjoy doing it that way just because I feel so much more engrossed into the story and feel like my mind can't really waver when I'm listening to the story whilst reading it at the same time because just haven't got the time to think about anything else, which is nice. So that was pure escapism and I really, really enjoyed it. This book also, I, I believe, is based on the real life events as in the dwarf really existed at the time. He had a different name and probably had a completely different life. So all of his life was mostly fiction, what the, th the things that he was going through, but it still was a really nice take on the book and I really enjoyed it. And I do believe next time if Francis Quinn writes anything else, I'm gonna buy the book and read it just because I'm curious. And I really like her writing style, it's so sweet and lovely. The second book that I read, I think is also gonna join the list of books that are my favorite books of the year. And that is The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. This is a non-fiction book. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's basically a compilation of different quotes and different almost like stories that the author shared uh, of his experience dealing with depression and suicidal thoughts and other things that he was dealing with in his life at some point. So I really, I think this book came to me at the best time because at that point when I found this book, um, 
I was feeling a little bit down about quite a few different things and this one just came to me at the right time so it really kind of helped me feel better genuinely I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it it did make me feel better one day I remember feeling really really sad but about after an hour of reading it I've suddenly realized I'm feeling much better already so I think it's gonna be one of those books that if I'm having a bad day or if I'm feeling sad about something if I'm feeling down or anything like that I could pick it up at any point open up any page at all and just read it because it's all like um, laid out in really short not exactly even chapters but you see different bits and bobs and just open it up on any page and read it because it's comforting obviously the comfort book so yeah um i read i think a couple of books by him in the past i read the humans and i might have read one more but i can't quite remember i could be completely wrong so i think i'd like to read more books by him in the future uh, I might go and read one day The Midnight Library, but I've heard it's a little bit depressing and sad, so I'm not sure whether I'm ready for it or not. But one day I might, or I might pick up his other books that are more, more older than The Midnight Library. But we'll see, but essentially this was a good book and it did come to me at the right time and I feel like it's going to help people who are feeling a little bit down, they need a little bit of words of encouragement, words of just comforting words that you don't sometimes have to try and be anything you can just live and enjoy the moment that you're in essentially you don't have to try to be anything you don't have to try and do anything you don't always have to be productive so don't always have to be happy it's okay to feel the way you feel that's essentially I think how I would sum up this book definitely a really good book and I really really enjoyed it Next one that I read is The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. This one was one of my Wheel of TBR books for the month of August and this one, as you're probably aware, is a classic science fiction book about the War of the Worlds. <laughs> so there, there are these machines that come from Mars and basically start destroying everything. To be honest, I thought I was going to enjoy it a lot more, but somehow I didn't. I think my problem was that it was kind of being narrated from like the past looking at the past i think if i was reading it from a perspective of something that's happening right now that would have been different but the main character he was like looking back saying how it was what happened i think that kind of threw me off and for some reason i just didn't care for most of it somehow it probably didn't help that mostly when i was reading it i was quite tired in the evenings but still i think it's not just me i think it's also the book i do enjoy classics from time to time it depends on the classics i think i need to connect a little bit more with the characters and this one just didn't happen and i didn't particularly care with anything that was happening for some reason i found it dull i don't know whether it was the way the book was written somehow that put me off that i didn't care i was not engrossed in it at all or even though i thought i was gonna really enjoy this book because Normally this kind of story would really make me so interested in it, it's just fascinating to me. Things from Mars, the Martians going to Earth and doing things here, it just sounds fascinating. But for some reason this book didn't give me any of that at all. Um, so that was a bit of a disappointment for me, unfortunately. I enjoyed one other book by the author, The Island of Dr Moreau. That one was a really good book, I really enjoyed it. It was fascinating, interesting, um, but this one was, unfortunately was a letdown. I can't say that I won't be reading any more books by him in the future because I definitely see myself reading some just out of curiosity like The Invisible Man and a couple of others, I can't quite remember some of them. But this one unfortunately was a bit of a letdown. I don't even know what was the problem with it, I just wasn't interested in it as much unfortunately. The next book was Ghost of the Nightingale by Diana Gorman and Patrick J. Gorman. This book, um, I was sent this book quite a while ago now, probably a couple of years ago or more than a couple of years ago. I was sent this book by the publishers, which are Austin McCauley publishers. Uh, this one and another one that I still got on my TBR, unfortunately. So I only now just got the chance of reading it. This is a historical fiction set in period of World War II. This one is a tiny little book. So I'm going to read you what the blurb says and then I'm going to tell you what I thought of the book. 
When visions come to you through unrelenting dreams, crying to be written, one eventually complies. Hence, we have the story of a young man who is to take on the challenge of sharing a life unfinished, a life that has been cut short at a death camp designed for mass murder. It offers the possibility that the darkest part of man can be slayed by the strength and victory of a beautiful spirit. It is both a lesson in history and an offer of hope as our world continues to struggle in the fight of good versus evil. So this blurb made me believe this book was going to be not exactly what it was. So um, I don't want to spoil anything but I think if I say what I'm going to say it's not going to spoil anything. So we follow our main character who um, essentially had a weird experience in his life when, when he visited Treblinka I think it is in Poland, one of the concentration camps he sees this figure then this figure touches him and this apparently a ghost or a spirit of one of the young men who died at that concentration camp and then our main character now has his consciousness so he's telling a story from his point of view and then he kind of lives with him somewhere in the background if that makes any sense how I've explained it. I do hope it's not a spoiler um, the first quarter of the book I wasn't enjoying it because it just felt like dry non-fiction about Hitler and history of that time. It was interesting from an like obviously educational point of view but I didn't enjoy it because it's not exactly what I expected it to be. I didn't expect there to be that much of non-fiction element in there and then later on it did become more of a fictional story which I did enjoy more but still, I don't think I enjoyed this book as much as I would have hoped because it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like more a bit like lyrical writing, more of a story of a young man who died at a concentration camp whilst in fact it's a bit of a mishmash of different bits and pieces. Which does have its own story and has its own message. But for some reason didn't feel quite connected to it as much as I wanted to and I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. I said I did enjoy it but not exactly to the point how I wanted to enjoy it. So yeah. So the last book that I finished was a non-fiction book, an audiobook that I started listening to quite a few months ago and just finished it in August and that is called How To Be Yourself by Ellen Hendriskin. I could have butchered the name completely. I think the author was reading the book herself so that was a different kind of experience. I think if I um, read this book in one month I would have enjoyed it more but considering I started it a few months ago then stopped listening to it then carried on again so it's a bit like disjointed in my memory but I think it is a good book and I think what I'm going to do one day is just to buy a physical copy and maybe reread it or just reread the passages because I do think it was a really good book. So like I said it's how to be yourself but it's mostly about social anxiety and how to overcome it. It doesn't like magically heal it obviously. It shows that it's an ongoing process um, that is not exactly the easiest thing to do but there are some tools that she's offering or some different ways of making it less strong which I appreciated. So I found this book really quite helpful and I wish I could write some things down so that I can look back at it and see which tools actually she was talking about and things like that but I, fortunately I didn't do that so that's why I'm thinking of buying a physical copy of it. But I do think it was a really good and kind of educational book as well so I would recommend it to people who have social anxiety to um, maybe feel better, not exactly feel better but overcome it slightly and it comes from the person who's got a PhD I think in that kind of air area and she also struggles with or struggled in the past with social anxiety so I think it's really important sometimes to read books like that when they were written by people who actually have dealt with the topic themselves. Also I read a really good chunk of this book which is The Labyrinth of the Spirits by Carlos Ruiz Safon. I've read this much in August I think pretty much yeah so I've read most of it and unfortunately I had to pause because there's magical readathon happening and everything so I'd rather concentrate on those books but if I read those four books that I've set up for myself um, I might still actually mention a couple more 
but I would like to finish this one in September as well but we'll see how it goes because I'm really enjoying it uh, it's just a massive book, it's 860 pages and I'm currently on page 576 so I still got quite a few pages to go and I'm excited but I can't quite read it yet this is my wrap up that these are all of the books that I read in the month of August if you read any of these please let me know what you thought of them so yeah that is it for this video if you liked it please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video thank you for watching bye